Hey everyone, welcome to the Energy Independence Group Show where we talk about everything energy and with the experts in those industries. We live in the best of times and what many may consider to be the worst. Longstanding businesses are at a standstill. Still, there is opportunity, there is a silver lining, and there are resources and leaders who are here to help our community and yours. The time has never been more important to learn from and lean on leaders and our fellow men. We have the people, we have the resources, and we have the technology to see prosperity and sustainability blossom like never before. At the Energy Independence Group, our mission is energy independence for all. We believe that energy independence is the American dream. We started our mission in Kern County, California, where we lead in oil, gas, agriculture, aerospace, distribution, wind, solar, and here soon, maybe an energy storage too. A lot of our engineers and business owners export their services worldwide and lend help toward a better world and a more prosperous and sustainable world. Today, we will have, we will be talking to Glenn Roberts from the U.S. Commercial Service. I'll let him introduce himself, but before I do, I'll read a letter from Congressman McCarthy to Mr. Roberts. I can't thank you enough for speaking today at our Small Business and Innovation Conference. Your insights and the information that you provide will be invaluable to our small business community. I couldn't agree more with uh, Kevin McCarthy, and uh, I, I appreciate your time, Glenn, also for being here and for your insight. Thank you for being on the show today, Glenn, and welcome. Well, hi, Les, and thank you for the uh, warm and kind introduction. Um, just to let the listeners know, I have been involved with international trade for close to 40 years. Uh, first, my first taste of international trade and exports was with a company called 3M back in the early 80s. And I've been able to work through most economic slowdowns because if our economy dips, the next courts go up. And that is why I've always focused on international trade. I can catch the economy going both ways. Absolutely. Well, what, what is uh, question two, what is your mission at the Department of Commerce? Oh, uh, it's. And this is going to be quick and simple. It, it's essentially creating jobs. The Department of Commerce is here to create jobs. We do have NOAA and NIST and a few other agencies that focus on gathering intel, uh, yet uh, the most of us within the Department of Commerce are helped to create American jobs. Absolutely. Well, you may have a simple response there with jobs, but it's not simple what you do in your role. What is your role at the Department of Commerce? Well, um, I'm... I'm part of the International Trade Administration and then put a slash in there, U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. So like the Small Business Administration, we're the International Trade Administration with, within the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, collectively known as the U.S. Commercial Service. That's how they brand us. That's how they know us locally uh, and nationally around the uh, states. I'm the regional director in Central California from Kern, County to Stanislaus County, and then from San Luis Obispo to Inyo counties. I specifically assist all of our local firms to export their goods, services, or technologies around the globe. I'm able to do that with the assistance of my colleagues that are in the most and the majority of our U.S. embassies and consulates in over 80 countries. And this is how we get the intel for our clients. It's pretty simple that way, and we really uh, have a good network and I, I take a lot of time to develop relationships with my colleagues overseas so I can help out our clients. Absolutely. Well, speaking of colleagues, how are staff and leadership adjusting to operating at a safe distance, so to speak? <laughs> okay. Well, you're talking to a guy who's probably, uh, if, if he gets the, uh, the COVID-19, it's probably going to take him out. Uh, I've always had a little problem with it, uh, with viruses over the years of my lifetime. However, um, we are 100% teleworking uh, since the early days of this crisis. And in fact, I was working out of my home the week, the week prior to all that. I, I had a lot of meetings outside the office, and it was just more convenient for me just to go back home. I telework on a routine basis one day a week. But now, more than ever, there's a need to stay connected and pass along information that is relevant to our companies here in California. And we have our, our agency has a lot of different webinars uh, taking place, along with all the partners that we have relationships to here in Central California. 
And I can, I can honestly say our partners are doing a great job. And the first few weeks, there wasn't much talk about international trade at that point. Everybody was worried about them themselves, their families, and their communities more so than worried about getting their products overseas. Uh, but now the uh, tide is turning, and now we're focusing back on those foreign marketplaces. And um, we may have, in the near future, uh, defaults from uh, open receivables. Uh, there may be cancellation of contracts. And so, again, we're there to help them out to see if we can help them get through all that. Along the way, uh, because we're so focused on exports, and yet I am out there uh, in the public space uh, doing uh, uh, seminars and then webinars and uh, working with my partners. A lot of times uh, since I'm with the federal government, a lot of people ask me about other programs. So at times I truly feel like I'm the gatekeeper of all the other government programs. So if I listen to what your needs are or your client's needs are, and I know it doesn't belong to us and it belongs to a certain uh, agency, oh, then I'll send them that way with hopefully a contact. Right. Well, I'd say you're not just a gatekeeper, you're, you're a leader in a way of uh, finding uh, ways to connect people and ways to innovate. And uh, speaking of innovation and the American spirit, are, are American businesses still importing and exporting during these challenging times? Bottom line is yes. Uh, for example, this week, the Port of Oakland uh, just received their largest container vessel to date. That's exciting. Uh, it, now, it will uh, be taking back some empty containers, and the imports are still coming in, and the exports are still going out, but not at the volumes prior. Do expect them to uh, start creeping back up. Well, that's good to hear. It's, it's always nice to know that people are getting by. And um, as people are hunkered down, if you're listening to the show, you're, uh, you're tuned in or you're watching this show, we encourage you to share the link and uh, join and like the page at facebook.com backslash EIG Solar. We have experts like Glenn on, uh, on the regular, and we're here to uh, educate and help you guys understand how we can get by and move forward. So uh, question number six, Glenn, is what kinds of opportunity do technology and energy companies have to export? Well, that, that, that is um, something that I, I would like to uh, provide a little bit of reinforcement here. Uh, let me give you a little bit of breakdown about how our organization is structured. Um, for example, we are structured across industry uh, sectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I focused on energy. I focused on energy right away. Um, like the introduction to the show, uh, Kern County is blessed with a traditional oil and gas. You have some of the major uh, solar concentrated power projects up on the high desert. You also have wind up there in Tehachapi, which was recently expanded, uh, you know, I don't know how many times over than what it used to be. And, and then you also have uh, various other types of uh, uh, solar concentrated power down um, uh, just north of Shafter. I think it belongs to a French company. Uh, and then you also have, you know, uh, biomass. Now, Kern County also has geothermal energy. Right. So you're talking about one county in California that has that wide mix and array uh, of, um, uh, 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 of, of, of power uh, generation. Now, um, so if you know that we're broken down by industry sectors and you know that uh, you'd work with folks like myself who have the experience, um, how do we actually help? Well, uh, we assist some of the major show organizers to bring vetted and screened international buyers to their shows. M many of your listeners may have heard of Penwell. Uh, which used to go underneath the Renewable Energy Show or Sol Solar International or Distributech. And there are various other shows that they put on, but they were really big recently. Um, I think they might have just uh, sold out, but the shows are still going on. And mm -hmm. the show organizers work with us to help bring those uh, vetted and screened buyers to the table. Now, who's doing that work? Our colleagues in those embassies and consulates I mentioned about earlier. And um, it, it, that gives an opportunity for a U.S. company to go to a domestic show and to potentially meet a, a decent partner in, in, a, in a foreign country. That's pretty exciting as a, as a two for one, if you will. 
Um, mm -hmm. But we also, for example, about eight years ago, I recruited and led a renewable energy and energy efficiency trade mission uh, to Turkey. And, and, and I was doing all that work while I was in the Bakersfield office at the time. Our embassy in Ankara, Turkey, organized so many events around that trade mission. Uh, and, and in fact, one of the uh, events was actually to meet inside the Ministry of Energy for Turkey. And one of my small clients in the renewable energy sector space was able to request from their Minister of Energy during the meeting if they could do a pilot project in Turkey. And right there on the spot, he granted permission, which was witnessed by all. That was fantastic. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better setup, right? Um, and in fact, that trade mission signed over $2 billion in, in deals, an energy oh, deal, energy efficiencies and, and renewable energy. Now, I have to admit, though, I did recruit a financier uh, that had an appetite to fund renewable energy deals, and that helped immensely as well. So just to recap a little bit, uh, the trade shows, we, we really provide a lot of and big support on there, trade missions. And then we also get trade leads uh, through our embassies and consulates, and we pass those along to companies that are applicable. So if we knew of a solar concentrated power uh, developer, uh, and then that trade lead came in, let's say, from Peru, well, then we'd be able to pass it along to them, and, and then it's up to them to, to exercise their, 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 their rights to, to go after that uh, opportunity. Absolutely. Well, I think, I think there's a lot of resources and, uh, and tools there at the Department of Commerce and with your office and through you. Could you, could you share a little, uh, a little bit of uh, that information with us? Sure. Um, resources are, are, I kind of consider them uh, also like some, some tools, assistant programs, whatnot. Uh, but just to let you guys know, you've heard some amazing things that we can do, but if you ask us, the majority of my colleagues, what are we known for? Our matchmaking. Our matchmaking between a buyer and our U.S. company is phenomenal. Um, that's our flagship service. We have a, a, a tailored product just to run that so you guys can go out there, meet the right people, use a rifle approach instead of a shotgun approach to get those contracts. Um, but you couldn't do all that. You couldn't do all that without market research. And our market research is the best in class. Why? Because it's my colleagues uh, in the uh, U.S. embassies and consulates that are getting that intel for us to work with. They're confirming who's who in the industries, what projects are coming up, um, uh, you know, which, which agencies are overlooking these um, projects, um, where do you need to get permits from, do you have to have local content involved, so on and so forth. So it, it's really matchmaking, the flagship service, that market research that really kind of helps out. Also, again, kind of falling back to the uh, gatekeeper thing, um, one of the biggest obstacles that I see uh, energy uh, developing companies try to get through on the international scene is uh, the, the cost of a feasibility study. Those are expensive at times. Who's paying for that? And traditionally, it's supposed to fall back on us. Well, that's a lot of money to, to put into a feasibility study, and you still don't know if you're going to get the job or not, right? Well, the U.S. government has a, uh, another agency called the Trade Development Agency, and they can assist us with third-party feasibility study grants. So the government actually hires a third party to make that feasibility study for the project and or the industry. Uh, and then that information is released back to the developer and the, the, uh, the buyer of the project. And of course, it's shared with the financiers to make sure that, okay, now we know the project is feasible and viable. Now let's go ahead and fund it. Um, if, for example, uh, we get to that point, and your project is, uh, let's say, over $5 million, uh, we have another agency uh, that if, they're, if the buyer's banking country can't do it, um, our own agency will help provide a, a loan, a direct loan, or a guarantee to your buyer's bank just to make the project happen. That's what the U.S. Export Import Bank, and that, that's, 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 that's amazing resources that we have. Uh, so, you know, you want to take advantage of these when it's, when it's the right time and uh, just having that gatekeeping 
a personality or a job task, if you will. You know, it's like, okay, first you want to go to USTDA, and then we're going to go over here. We're going to try OPEC, which is the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, or you want to go with uh, uh, XM Bank, you know, and all these other different agencies out there to make the project work. And again, we don't create the jobs until we start getting those projects in, in, in-house for our clients. Pretty amazing, right. isn't it? Oh, it really is. I, I've seen your amazing work uh, as an intern over there 14 years or so ago, and uh, I was amazed. I learned a lot and I uh, saw how deals happen and how uh, things are moved and uh, how, how you guys can shake things over there, and particularly with your leadership. Can you tell us, uh, speaking of projects and, and a lot of the things you've worked on, it sounds like, you know, obviously, if, if anyone's listening here, that Glenn has been involved in a lot of a lot of projects. Can you tell us, Glenn, what are some of your favorite projects and uh, the efforts you've been a part of? Uh, sure. The uh, trade mission that I referenced earlier was totally amazing in so many aspects. It, it would take an afternoon to detail it out for everybody uh, that's listening. And maybe we can do that at a later time uh, for your listeners. H- however, uh, th- that one included uh, uh, meeting the right people, uh, going through airports, uh, again, meeting the right people, and, and we're still working with them today. So, so the trade missions, and, and you have to be kind of selective on them, uh, but, but th- they are pretty powerful. In fact, um, I actually recruited the, uh, the nation's first bioenergy trade mission to Central Europe, and, uh, and, and that was the first one. That was before the Department of Energy could do one, and we were able to do it because the needs that were expressed and, and what I can hear and the clients that I'm working with, everything kind of matched up. So we, we did a, um, a five-stop trade mission in Central Europe. So that was amazing. Uh, I was also instrumental in exporting the first biodiesel plantation and refinery to India. And that, that was early 2000s. And so uh, th- these projects are just sweet. Uh, lately, I've focused on the geothermal, biomass, and hydropower. And, you know, I'm working with countries like Bhutan and, and Bhutan, they, they're 95% of their GDP is exporting energy to India. <laughs> I mean, oh. it, it, opportunities are out there. Uh, you may have to get out and about, but, um, you know, it's kind of scary, but having the U.S. government on your side doing uh, overseas business really helps out quite a bit, actually. Yeah. And uh, speaking about being out and about out there, what are some of the trends and opportunities in technology and energy that you see is the future bright? Well, okay. Uh, well, well, let's, let's take a look at uh, what's taking place now. Uh, our oil and gas industry is, um, is going through um, at the moment. I mean, they're, they are being hit hard and you know, that, that re- that's going to reflect in our local economy here in Kern County. Uh, but it's also uh, global. So, so there's going to be uh, some opportunities probably about six months from now for oil and gas. But um, our new normalcy will look a little different a- after we, we get uh, back into the swing of things. And uh, one of the things I hear and, and love to work on, uh, another favorite project of mine was actually uh, help develop uh, the sustainable communities. Uh, from the waste up approach. So I hear a lot about sustainable communities. Sustainable, sustainable communities are going to need renewable energy and energy efficiencies to make it work for them. Um, I have been privileged to know that there are new uh, technologies coming down the pipeline. I am not able to share those details, obviously, on the phone. But however, uh, the energy generators will, uh, will change and it will substantially uh, improve how those uh, generators uh, create that electricity and transmit it. So that is something I'm looking forward to uh, coming down the pipeline. Uh, also, uh, working with your National Renewable Energy Lab. They, they have resources as well. Um, if you ever get a chance, I've had the privilege a couple of times to visit our renewable energy labs. Uh, it's in Golden, Colorado. And the work that they do uh, to improve solar is phenomenal. I don't know if other countries follow this same sort of format, um, but it does allow our U.S. Uh, inventors and entrepreneurs and in the, in the, in the renewable energy space to develop their uh, technology with the oversight and the experience of our National Renewable Energy Lab. So I think that is 
something to go in. But the opportunities, nothing is going to go away. Biomass is going to be around. Geothermal is going to be around. Hydro is probably the best cost-effective renewable energy we can use. And the industry sector uh, is quite aware of using fish ladders now. If you go to a, a hydropower show, you'll see that uh, th there is a, a – there's a cognizance of, of not only the environment and not, you don't have to create a dam every time. So uh, they, they really, uh, they really starting to, to, to get their act together. And in fact, at the hydro shows, it's called hydro power, another pinwell show actually mm -hmm. uh, used to be, um, but um, they celebrate any working project over hundred years old. So, so hydro has been around for quite a while. It helps out with flooding mitigation and stuff like this. Um, and then I think what's really exciting, I think this is where the uh, trend is going to go for the U.S. is going to be waste to energy. Uh, you know, we've been blessed to have a lot of space for landfills, but other countries have not. And, and waste to energy is just a brilliant way of taking a, a waste stream and converting it into revenue. And I think that is brilliant. I think those are where you need to look for your opportunities. And uh, I, I, I certainly think... Uh, that the jobs that they create, because each one of them is, is unique, and, and it takes a, a highly qualified engineers to do those type of projects. So those are great paying jobs, and, uh, and each one of them needs to be engineered. It's not a cookie cutter approach, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you hit a lot of great points and a lot of technology. There's so much out there that we in America and the world can use to uh, power our world. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, reminded of all of your knowledge on in that way. And we're actually we work, um, we're working on some ethanol uh, waste recycling uh, processes at Energy Independence Group too. So it's nice to hear that you think that's a big part. But we think it will be also. And then, you well, know, it's certainly uh, less. It it certainly uh, helps clean our environment. Now you, you've seen the the pause button hit, and 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 you know all the the. The clean air that, that we're starting to see. I mean, look at your air quality down in Kern County at the moment. It, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that in 10, 15 years. You know, that, that, that methanol uh, recovery um, it, it is exactly what you're doing. You, you're, you're taking that, that waste product and converting it into a useful uh, power generation product. And uh, the waste stream off of that is much, much easier for the plant to handle than it is in its raw form. Absolutely. Now, those, those opportunities are out there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it also leads to safety. We'll be making some hand sanitizer and some uh, some wipes, uh, keeping uh, surfaces clean for uh, Kern County. <laughs> yes, perfect. Thank so, you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So one of the um, things we like to ask in these times is, can you leave us, Glenn, with some uplifting words, maybe a quote or some thoughts for uh, these times as we hunker down? Yes. Um, first of all, from my desk, I like to say most importantly, stay safe keep your family safe and healthy. Uh, secondly, please know that if you wish to pursue an international market, uh, that uh, me and my office are here to, help, to assist you guys here locally in, in Central California. We're here. I, I'm just a, a couple hours drive from Bakersfield uh, and I can meet with you guys. Those, those are really two important things. Lastly, I, again, talking about that pause button being hit and watching the uh, the water clean up a little bit. I mean, the, the, the canals of Venice, they were able to see the bottoms for the first time in decades. Right. Uh, uh, you probably heard that on the news. The, the air quality in Central California has improved and we're, my wife and I are Bakersfield out Bakersfield is beautiful. Life. Everybody wants to live here now. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got snow on the mountains around you and, and you got that, uh, you get that Hatchety Mountains going across there. It's just beautiful right now. And so, um, you know, we, we can do the right things for the planet and uh, we can do all this stuff. And, and I, and I really think it's, it's folks like yourselves, your listeners, uh, assistance with folks like my, myself and our agency that can really do each project makes a difference. Let's just concentrate on doing one project at a time, but let's be prepared to rise to the occasion and get your solutions out there to provide um, what is necessary for our community to, to thrive. Absolutely. Well, we, we look for that, we're looking for sustainability and we believe at the Energy Independence Group that energy independence is really the foundation for a lot of uh, what we need to have a better world. We encourage you to join us on the show next time and uh, you can visit us at facebook.com backslash EIG Solar where we encourage you to like, 
comment, share, and join in this energy revolution. We encourage you to join us again next time we have uh, hopefully Glenn on sometime soon. He's busy, as Congressman McCarthy indicated. And, and again, uh, Glenn, I appreciate your time too. And I look forward to talking to you soon. And I appreciate all that you do for our community and for the world. Thank you again. Well, thank you, Les. I also appreciate what you're doing to get the word out. And uh, maybe next time we can start focusing on some uh, energy storage. One, hey, another favorite topic to talk Micro, about. Microgrid <laughs> okay. technology. We love it. <laughs> Microgrid technology. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. All right, Glenn. You have a good one. We'll talk soon. Stay All safe. All right. Stay safe. And thanks again.